Welcome to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. Arif, you and I, we had a great dialogue on a recent show. We were talking about the money. We were talking about mortgages, mortgage debt, mortgage financing, everything in and around the dollars that are involved with real estate purchase and sale. And we never really wrapped it up as we often do on this show. We have more conversation than we do time to get it all out. So I thought we would start this show kind of picking up some of those, uh, some of those details that you wanted to get to uh, on that show. So I'll turn it right over to you right now. Well, okay, perfect. Mike, it was great to see you. Uh, no, but <laughs> you're absolutely right. There is so much to talk about and, and it's, a, it's a phenomenal conversation. It's actually really quite an interesting conversation if you let it be one. Yeah, and, and it's also a more frequent conversation out there that you're hearing. Absolutely, you're, you're right, Mike. And, and uh, interestingly, uh, just in the last few days, I had at least three people, I can't remember, it was three or four people come up to me from varying perspectives and just said, hey, listen, caught your show. It, w it wasn't an easy pill to swallow, mm. but thank you. Because Wish I had taken actually, some notes as you advise that we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that's them. just it. And, and yeah. So I'm not going to group everybody into the same uh, sort of lump, if you will, mm. but, but <clears throat> different people saying, yeah, that, that really did resonate with me. Mm. One person said, I've been watching your show for years, and truth be told, I didn't follow your sort of guidance or suggestions yeah. and we're not giving financial advice on the show but we're we're having conversations about the reality and what the numbers are, are telling us right mm -hmm. I didn't quite follow that and I'm, I'm living what you're talking about and, today and part of that reality for all of us as Canadians and I guess you could also say as Canadian politicians and we're going to get a little more into that a little later too is we've come through an economic environment over the last 10 years where there was wiggle room yep. where you could trip over yourself a little bit or, or maybe make some missteps and still get away with it but now the margins are so much tighter that now everybody's paying attention and going you know how do I walk that line yeah I want to get into that with you yeah I do want to get in that with you but I think you also here we go we're talking about what we talked about before the show but what we mm -hmm. did talk about I thought you brought up a great point as <clears> well Mike as he said you know back a few years ago maybe a couple decades ago we saw higher interest rates than oh, yeah. what we're Close seeing today. To 20%, significantly yes. higher. Yeah. So what, four times but higher But what was rates? different then than, it, than now? Right. What was different? Let's have that conversation as well today. Some of the things we could touch on that were different was, I think we both agreed, the ratio between cost of home ownership and household income, mm -hmm. even though many were on a single income, yeah. was quite a bit tighter. Yeah. Right. So income hasn't kept up with inflation yeah. and forget inflation but we, we had a hasn't far kept up with more and far different expenses absolutely um, you know one of the things we've talked about is 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 all the services we pay for now whatever products you're using with your computer at one time as you pointed out you'd, you'd buy that microsoft uh, latest thing and you'd run it on your computer for a few years and you paid one time now everything is an ongoing monthly pay payment that never ends you're buying subscriptions to everything we're buying it for our entertainment with the uh, you know TV TV shows cable and then also all the other uh, streaming channels um, the other thing that's really different too is um, you know when, when you think back to when you were a kid when we were kids in our parents household and I've, I think I've said it before here is that uh, we had the same set of appliances in the house when I started school as we did when I left uh, finished school um, Everything's disposable now. Everything is designed the lined obsolescence. It's yep. going to fail at yep. some point. So we're forever replacing, partly because things fail, but also partly because it, now everything we own is they've managed to make it a fashion statement. So you have to have that latest uh, this, that, or the other, just so you look like you have the latest fashion. Right. Uh, so when when people say you know the cost of goods has gone down or things have gotten cheaper, and then at the same time we say they've gone up. Uh, Th those things that are cheaper, they're cheaper, but they also don't last as long. So you end up paying in, over the lifetime well, that's of that item, you end up paying for it several times yeah. over. You had a home phone right. that was the same home phone for, for generations, and now you have a cell phone that needs to be replaced every few years because the next one has a few more bells and whistles. Right, so let's take everything into perspective. Mike, you talked about whether or not you bought your, your Microsoft Office sort of uh, program for $500 and you paid for it once versus paying X number of mm. dollars on a subscription. Absolutely. But let's also look at some of the bigger purchases. For example, you go and buy a car today, mm -hmm. and there used to be that soap 
uh, written on the windshield of what the price of the vehicle was. Yeah, you're really dating yourself, Art. I know, I know. But it no longer today says what the price of the vehicle the is. The carrying cost. It says the carrying cost. Yeah. It says the weekly. It says buy it for one ninety nine. It does, in the fine print. It's weekly, bi weekly, or monthly. But it just yeah. says one ninety nine because we're attracted Break to the one ninety nine. Break it into smaller bites, and we'll be we won't be scared away. So our reality check today is that whole. Okay, I don't want to make it too morbid sounding, but death by a thousand cuts. When you, if if you don't start paying attention to it, it will sneak mm-hmm. up on you. And where we are today, when you when you raise a good point, when you argue a point that says, "But wait a second, why is everybody getting out of sorts when we're looking at you know six uh, uh, percent mortgage rates when we've mm-hmm. seen twenty two percent mortgage rates in the past? We've managed it. It's not the end of the world. We we can manage it." But you're absolutely right. The environment has changed. Yeah. We've changed. How we've conditioned ourselves uh, has changed. How we allowed ourselves to become conditioned yeah. has changed. There's, and we need to have yeah. that conversation today, Mike. Yeah. And there's also yeah. that ratio of you know household income to the cost of a home. Yes. Uh, that has changed dramatically too. Yes. Um, yes, wages have gone up since 1975. Let's say. Um, but to a, greater, to a greater extent, housing costs have gone up. And a lot of that cost has taken place just within the last five years, too. That's really thrown it out of kilter. So. Right. So, so for anybody who says that the banks and the regulators have made it more difficult to actually get a mortgage, mm-hmm. I'm going to challenge you that only part of that statement is mm, accurate. It's one of many things, yeah. We have actually made it more difficult by our own doing by our own hand of that. what we have allowed ourselves to do. So again, very rarely do we sit and audit our lives. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There are some people, I still know that there are people who pull out their version of a checkbook. Mm-hmm. In this, if you're down in the States, people actually still carry checkbooks. Yeah. But there are still people who carry out their little bank book and when they go to spend something, they're checking, do I have the money available to me? Mm-hmm. Typically, they're of a different generation. Than well, today? That's, that's that's the other thing too is is how we spend our money. Is it used to be a, if you had no money, it's just well, I, I can't spend any money this week and I don't have any money. I have a six year old daughter, mm. who has said to me in the recent past, Daddy, we just need to go to the bank and you can go the to the machine, machine and the machine will give you more money. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. that was my cue <laughs> 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 to very slowly start using financial literacy into her life a little bit mm-hmm. more. But there is an idea, and, and it was very indicative and representative of, of, of a culture today. I'm not saying that everybody's that foolish to think that you go to the bank and it gives you money. That's right. But we don't. Never mind where babies come from. Where does money come from? That's just as valuable a conversation to have with your kids. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we don't because it is typically a plastic or digital currency or online or tap your phone and stuff like that we're not we just genuinely are not paying as much attention well, you're, not, you're not looking to at your wallet available. and going oh i've only got three of these bills left where i had five of them before it's out of sight out of mind it's, absolutely yeah. so let's go and take a look at some of these things i don't want to go too long on that but i do want to set the tone of really where we are we talked in the last uh, conversation that we that you were referencing about where we were where we are we also want to talk where about we're going, where yes. we're going and and one of the conversations that really needs to be had i think mike is that part of where we are again uh we, we talked about you know things to do during the pandemic we did give some suggestions of things that people might consider speak to your account and you might want to do this mm. that kind of thing but i actually one of the calls that i had was from a client who for years i've been saying hey listen uh you make great income Congratulations, you're in great shape today, but I'm a little concerned about your habits, Mm -hmm. okay? Because even though you're making great money, what happens if? So for anybody who's watching, there are there are business owners, there are self-employed individuals who should not be confusing themselves as business owners, and then there are employees. Mm -hmm. Uh, A business owner, uh, typically who has others doing the implementation, may have some form of scalability and leverage that allows them to make money while they're sleeping or allows them to make money even if they're not present. It may be mm-hmm. investment income, it may be residual income, it may be recurring revenue, that kind of thing that yep. they're not physically Ideally, we all would for. like to have that. Yes. Would, be, would be nice, but that's up to us to, to go and pursue yep. that. There are others who are self-employed 
which means you only get paid if you're showing up. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who are employed who may only be getting paid if they show up or may have some access to some form of a short-term or long-term disability that can assist, but it's never the same as full mm. income, or very rarely, okay? Mm. Here's the thing. I said to this, this individual, I said, I need you to be careful because while you're making great money now and while you have made great money that supported your lifestyle so far, what if? Well, that's it. What if? Keep a buffer zone in your, between your lifestyle and your income that's going to... Well, guess what? For many, what if actually happened in the last couple of years where income opportunities changed, shifted, we were yeah, forced and to they go are into shifting a hiatus. As we speak. Yeah. They're still shifting as, as we speak. Some people got laid off. Some people did not. Some people went to remote. Some stores closed. Some businesses closed. Some businesses adjusted. And spending and habits are... Uh, they, they didn't immediately change when inflation started. There's kind of a lag, but I think we're at a point now uh, with added in, in interest rates or heightened interest rates and inflation, you know, a year in people are now starting to feel it and they're now starting to change their, their shopping and purchasing habits, which is going to have an impact on the bottom line of the GDP as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Consumer consumer spending is going to go down quite a bit, I think. I'm going to wrap the story up with this one thought sure. on this one particular story. Reality did happen, as it did for many. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about some things that people did in the last few years, maybe when we come back from the break in a moment. But with this individual, he didn't heed my warning. Mm -hmm. And his income changed drastically during the last two years of, right. of the pandemic as in gone down as it went down mm -hmm. absolutely now here's the thing you've heard us say on the show mike we've talked about this that you don't just have to qualify to buy the house you actually have to qualify to stay in the house to carry. every time your mortgage comes up for renewal and yeah. ideally actually you're theoretically in the fine print on one of the pages in one of the paragraphs obligated to notify your lender if your employment changes mm -hmm. or if there's a material change in your income to or your potential. income yeah you're obligated to tell them does anybody do it i doubt it i, mean, I don't mm -hmm. think that that really happens but come time for renewal you're going to be asked to show some things. You're going to ask, be asked to show that you can continue carrying. Yeah, some current you income statements. You might get a yeah. document that says just sign here and choose your options and we're going to pretend everything is fine. You might have that happen. But what if in the last two years you actually went and did a bunch of renovations because you, were, you weren't working, so you had time, you did some renovations, you poured mm -hmm. money in your house, you used your credit card, and now you need to refinance instead of just renew. Mm -hmm. You're now stuck. We have to go to break. Yeah. But when we come back, I, I think I kind of ran out of time there. I want to put a punchline. I, I want to put a little sure. information on what happens if wanna, that is I hear the your rest of this scenario. Story. Yeah. What are you going to do about it if that's your scenario? So stay with us. There's lots to talk about. You may be tempted to change the dial, so to speak. Don't. You're going to want to stay with us. We're going to rag on government a little bit here <laughs> a little later on. You want to stay tuned for that. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif, and we're talking about mortgage realities and reality checks and financing, and you, you wanted to finish up what you were getting into just before we went to the break. I'll pass it over to you for that. Well, no, I, and, and I appreciate it, Mike. It's, it's such an interesting story because it is definitely human tendency to want to hear that everything's always going to be okay, want mm -hmm. to hear that things are fine. Like a Bob Marley tune. Sure, absolutely. Or to want to hear that I know I need to change, but I'll get away with it this time, but just one more time and then I'll change everything. I swear, I promise. Like next year, I'm going to keep my New Year's resolution kind yeah. of thing. And, and this is an interesting story. Just one because, more truffle. Yes. Because we're talking about, and, and I want to frame the story properly. Mm -hmm. We're talking about someone who has sufficient this, equity this in their home. This is someone you've been dealing with. In this the situation, yeah. 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 Sufficient equity in their home earns a really good income, mm. and has great credit. So one might say, well, what could go wrong? It's mm. fantastic. This person's going to qualify for anything and everything they want. Yeah. And that's just not the truth. So I, I know I know where the theme of the show today is reality check, and I think it's appropriate. I think this is part of the reality check. Mm -hmm. If we had a second line on the bottom of our screen that we could say, oh, and by the way, as much as you've heard us on this show say that 
we may question what some of the policymakers and legislators have been doing uh, mm -hmm. in, in recent months and years. Yeah, it's not only the government's fault. It's too easy to be to be able to blame it on well, the government. Well, you can or, or you don't have. You can throw your hands up, but the, the reality is you've got to take, take care of yourself and your family and keep that roof over your head and do what you do, at regardless point, of why it's happening. At but, some point, the numbers are going to matter, and this yes. is really what we've been trying to share with well, people. So, so let me let me just get you mm -hmm. to the to the punchline on this scenario here. Yeah. Great income, great equity, great credit. Mm -hmm. During the pandemic, though reality did hit this person was saw a significant d decrease in their income now the homes come up for renewal the person put money into their home by use of credit cards and line of credit to increase the value of the home mm -hmm. all great things but you got to be able to qualify to keep the house right yeah so now suddenly their ratios are out of whack yeah now suddenly they're so close that they may or may not get the ability to requalify, not just to keep the house, but to also pay down some of that debt. They're going to yeah. have to look at friends and family or, or work harder or work longer or whatever it might be to pay down yeah. some and of that it, debt. It's quite likely that many of us, given that over the span of the last 10, 15 years, which may be, you know, encompass the entire scope of time, you've owned a home. We've paid little attention to that renewal period, that yep. time when it comes up. It's just, oh, my mortgage, oh, and it just rolls over into the next. I think all of us need to have a look at, you know, at our policy and see when that mortgage is coming due and then step back and go, okay, what has changed in my world between, you know, maybe even talk to your lender, have that early conversation with them. Um, I just had that conversation with you who put together my last mortgage, which is coming due next year. Uh, I'm going to need to sit down and look at what has changed with regards to income, with regards to debt, everything else, and how it applies to the new rates and the the new bar that I'm going to have to qualify under uh, to continue on with that mortgage. All of us should be doing that. We shouldn't be doing it the week before. We should be doing it now uh, and knowing when that, uh, that's the best advice we can give everybody on that. I might keep you around for an advertisement. That's awesome. Exactly. That great, great guidance, Mike. Yeah. And, and so, you know, th this is the scenario that people need to realize mm -hmm. is that you can only, and by the way, we can look to government, we can look to local, provincial, municipal, cut state, us a check, federal government, et cetera. Well, you just saw in the, in the United States, they were, and this is almost like clockwork, it's like dun, 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 cue the, cue the negative mu music about you know, the, the U.S. might go into default if they don't raise the debt ceiling. How many times have we seen this? And how many times do we know? It's always going to come down to the 11th hour and it's mm. always going to get solved and they're always going to go, Shh, we dodged a bullet there. No, you just took on trillions of more dollars worth of debt. In Canada, we just took on billions well, of more dollars. Well, 60 billion is the budget they want to put through right now. And that's not 60 billion. That's additional 60 billion on dollars in spending exist. that is not going to be included. It is going to be included in the deficit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. So so on a personal level, and one of the themes that we talked about you know, that, on that last show was forget what everybody else is talking about. Let's focus on you. Let's yeah. focus on ourselves and what our actual reality is. Yeah. And so here it is, Mike. Okay. At some point, doesn't matter how much equity you have in your home, mm -hmm. you can't keep counting on racking up a credit card that might be at 9% if you're yeah. lucky, if you got great credit and you paid on time, you've been keeping up, mm -hmm. right? Or a line of credit again. Or a line of credit that was at 6% a year ago, but it's now at 12% mm -hmm. because of the change yeah. in your prime plus, and that's the prime that changed, right? Mm -hmm. Or you might be in a 25% credit card because you missed a few payments and now mm. you're in six months worth of your credit cards charging you a premium for the next six months until you yeah. have six months. And if of all you're payments. doing is meeting your monthly payments, which is all you're required to pay on a credit card. And then card, you said, but you which know is what? only covering the interest. I swear this time, after I use the equity in my home to get my credit cards down to zero, I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? No, it's a cycle for You've some. only got so much equity in your home. Maybe your equity actually came down because the house price is tempered by 10 to 15 to 30 percent, depending mm -hmm. on where you live. Mm -hmm. And maybe it doesn't matter if you have enough equity in your home because your income still has to be able to pass the ratios, the formula yeah. that says you can service the debt. If you look at what the Bank of Canada and legislators are advising the big banks, they're saying, get your house in order, which is really ironic. 
because they're the ones who jacked rates by 400 percent. Yeah. And then they're telling the banks to tell to get people to get their house in order. So one of the things that we touched on last time was the fact that people have now said, well, I can't make my payments as they are. I'm, I'm down from 30 years or 25 years down to 20 or 15 or 10 years left on my mortgage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to refinance to t absorb my credit card or unsecured debt, yeah. which is weighing me, my household down, cramping my lifestyle. I'm going to use the equity in my home and I'm going to go from bi-weekly accelerated to monthly, which means I'm going to end up paying more over the life of the mortgage, but it's going to make my carrying costs a little bit lighter. Yeah. And I'm going to stretch my mortgage back out to 30 or 35 mm -hmm. years. 30, I think 33% of people are now doing that. They've mm -hmm. now gone beyond uh, 30, 30 years on their amortization. I didn't even know that was possible in Canada. It, well, uh, it was 40 and they brought it back down and then they've kept it back up. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. That's great. Now you're the person who's buying a car based on what it says on the window sticker of what it's going to cost you per week. Mm -hmm. But you're not paying attention to the fact that you're going to pay 30% more for yeah, that pay for your house three or times that over, car. Over your right? lifetime. Yeah. So we've got to pay attention because while you might get away with it this time, and you might not, we're mm -hmm. looking at scenarios where people aren't going to get away from it. They don't have enough equity in their home, or they're already stretched at 30 to 35 yeah. years, or it doesn't matter if there's equity, they can't afford to service yeah. the debt. We need to wake up as a nation. We need to wake up as For a sure. society. We it's need a wake to wake up, up call. as generations. It's a wake up time. And, and, and it's easy to see how many over the past number of years have fallen into it. Interest rates were ridiculously low. Um, many people were seeing the equity build up in their homes. They thought, well, if I put that rec room into the basement, if I put that pool in the backyard, if I buy that new car, take a line of credit, uh, leverage it against the home, it's not that big a deal because interest rates are low. I deserve it. Many of the purchases I'm going to make are actually going to increase, add value to my home. Um, but that was all well and good when interest rates were 1.52% on it. When you were buying that car and they were offering 0.99% financing, um, those were good times, yep. you know? And Mike, they, they, as a they society, seem though, very close in the rear view mirror, but, uh, but they're gone for quite some time. It's gonna be a while before we come back. I agree with that. you. Yeah. This, this, might, this might rub somebody the wrong way, so be it. Yeah, okay. and, and you know what? One of the big headlines we see is that, you know, debt levels are as high as they've ever been. And of course they are because house prices are as high as they've ever been and more people own homes. And, and a portion of that is frivolous spending that we're leveraging or we're, we're, uh, we're borrowing to, to purchase, taking vacations, whatever we're doing with it. We're there. But it's only a, a fraction of the people who are right at the edge of the cliff who are likely to fall over over the next few years. The rest of us will, you know, I, I make the equation or the analogy that it's, it's, it's like we, we, people tell us or we're told by media that uh, uh, we're overweight as a society. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You go on a diet, you lose a little bait, you change your eating habits. Well, we have to change our spending habits and go on a financial diet and spend a little less. And we will pull those in line and just like the you know, actual physical diet, the financial diet will come out the other end healthier than we were before we went in, if we do all the right things and do it right. So it's not the end of the world as many of the media stories will have you believe. It's just a time to wake up and a reality check for sure. Absolutely. And so, so you know, Mike, uh, one of the conversations that we had uh, w included the fact that, well, times were different back then. We, we maybe only earned a dollar an hour or five dollars an hour, but the house, the price of the house was anywhere between 35 and 55 or 65,000 mm -hmm. dollars. Fair enough. But as we said earlier, we've taken on as habits. We've allowed ourselves to take on a whole bunch of subscriptions. So, mm -hmm. for those who who felt a, a moment of victory because they cut the cord, as was one of the trends that was going on a number of years, they've since replaced that cord with five different subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Right, which actually cost more than the cord did itself. Yeah. Now, so there are those but who are, also they're, argue they're, they're smaller, digestible bites. So somehow it doesn't uh, impact. There's as, another as saying hard. for that, Mike. Yeah. There is a saying for that. But here's the thing: there are those who will rightly say, "Yes, but I dipped into my line of credit or I dipped into my credit cards because I wasn't making it." So no, I wasn't spending frivolously. Or if I'm shame on you, you're 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 poking fun at me or you're making me feel bad. Uh, I, I did this to survive. Understood. 
Mm -hmm. understood. I've got no emotion attached yeah. to this. I'm well, compassionate. The survival skills I have evolved. You. You However, want to the next five years, we have to have a look. It, yeah. My opinion doesn't matter. We have to have a look at this. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are on record quite, and I'm confident to stay on record saying it. I don't necessarily agree with the policy shifts that have been mm -hmm. done. Today's message, though, is about what's our responsibility? What's our role in, in the equation of our own yeah. lives? And what are we going to do and, about and, it? And within society too, I mean, we're talking to the people who all the blips in the, in the economy, the economic cycle are, are going to impact first and hardest. Uh, but there's a big segment of the population too that those little bumps really aren't going to make any difference to. They're continuing to buy and sell homes. They're continuing to go on. Um, they too should probably take some, uh, you know, financial responsibility and control over it. And, you know, possibly they do, and that's how, why they're where they are now. Yeah. Who knows? When but, we come uh, back from the break, yeah. let's talk about a couple of things. I, I do want to talk about um, really how the price of housing has outpaced income and what the impact that has had yeah. on, on people. I also want to talk as well, and we'll bring it back to that either in the next segment or the final segment, is the promises of government that they're going to build X number of homes per year, we had at the federal, the provincial, municipal level, and what the reality is around those uh, projections or, or promises. Uh, Perfect. Let's have a reality check on that too. Sounds like it's a good time to go to break. We'll be right back with more on Hitting Home with Mike and Arf. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif. We're talking financial reality checks here. And one thing you touched on or used the term uh, in the last segment, uh, I wanted to bring it back around to that, was uh, you referenced the gig economy, which is the work at home economy, self-employment. It, it was a trend we were seeing over the last number of years uh, that was happening more and more technologies allowing for that. Just the, the workplace scenarios, uh, various companies are, are encouraging it. Then we hit into the pandemic and it just took off. Um, tie that back in with mortgages and, and mortgage renewals though for those who are part of that gig economy without scaring the heck out of us, Eric. I will, I will do my very best not to scare the heck out of anybody. However, there still is the whole idea of a reality check. Yeah. Mike, you're absolutely right. The pandemic was many things. Some of them were tragic and terrible. Some of them actually provided opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and opportunity certainly through change in circumstance or situation, but as well as change in technology made certain things possible. And it's great. I mm -hmm. love I love the upside of things that came out oh, of it for amazing. those who yeah. who went in, in search of it, found it, fought for it. The absolutely. creativity and imagination that that brought about many products and services that were were non-existent or have been totally revamped. It's exactly. incredible. Yeah. So let's get into the gig economy just for a second and how that what that actually means in terms of somebody and, and their ability to get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Here's the facts. You've heard this before. We talked about this recently on a show as well. One of the worst things that a person could do is find out that they got approved for a mortgage and then decide, hey, that's awesome. I'm going to go get a new car to match the house. <laughs> and, and they get it before closing. The day before closing, the bank pulls their credit and sees mm -hmm. that they got a new, uh, new car loan for $1,000 a month or whatever it may be and says, sorry, you don't qualify mm -hmm. or you're going to have to come up with a bunch of cash in order to qualify. So I know a couple people who may be watching right now who are putting their head in their hands. So Absolutely. <laughs> so when it comes to the gig economy, again, people did things either for opportunity or out of necessity. And I, I am totally empathetic to all of those scenarios, whatever they may be. However, it doesn't absolve you of your responsibility, both to the lender who has an interest in your house and, and interest in getting repaid for the amount of money that you've borrowed for the house, as well as yourself, mm. your own ability to stay qualified for that home. And so just like it's not a good idea to go buy a new car when, you're, when, you, when the home isn't yours yet, mm -hmm. and, and it isn't a great idea to buy a, a new car the day after you buy a home yeah. if it changes your situation either. Let's be honest about that. The math yeah. still matters whether mm. it's before or after you close on the For home. Sure. So too is it very dangerous or something you must take into consideration and get guidance around your 
knee-jerk reaction or your lingering and longing desire to go and get into the gig economy, get away from employment. So for those people who said, I'm done with this whole pandemic thing, or I've learned in the pandemic I can work from home and I don't need to commute an hour and a half each way. I'm not way. going back to the office. I don't yeah. want to go back to the office. In fact, I'm going to start my own. That side hustle thing that I was doing is now going to be my mm -hmm. daytime business. I think I can be successful at it. Great. I want you to be successful at okay. it. I absolutely want you to be so successful at it. Mortgage renewal comes around. I'm knocking at the door. I go in to sit down with you. What's the reality check? The reality check is that your lender will quite likely, depending on whether you're in one of the big six or what's referred to as an A lender or a prime lender mm -hmm. versus a secondary lender, an alternative lender. But regardless of which lender you're at, you still have to show some form of capacity to be able to meet your obligation unless you're in what's referred to as an equity only deal majority of people aren't in an equity only deal which just means if there's money in the house you can borrow the house right. and and you might have to sell the house to pay it back mm -hmm. let's not talk about that just for a second for somebody who eventually wants to pay their mortgage off mm -hmm. and there's a qualification and a formula required to show that you can service yeah. your debt the moment you decide to jump ship on whatever your form of income is even if it's self-employment or business ownership or employment type of income or contract or commission. The moment you're changing your scenario mm. and therefore it impacts your relationship with your existing lender, they're gonna have questions. Yeah. And so if you went from, let's just use a round number of earning $50,000 a year employment income, and mm. now you're able to say, well, I'm making $50,000. every week. Yeah. That's a consistent check. But now you decide to get into the gig economy or the side hustle and you want to be self-employed. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Let's say, hey, my side hustle has now matched my employment income. I'm going to drop my employment income and I'm now making the same $50,000. But you don't have the employment or the income history. To you show. don't have the history and self-employment by wanna, lenders. They care less about what you anticipate making it than they do about what you made in the last year or two. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. You had a provable track record showing biweekly checks coming in or your taxes being filed as a T4 style of employment and income earning uh, opportunity mm. there, and you've now gone to self employment or mm. something along the, or, or straight commissions or whatever it is. You've changed one of the variables in the relationship. Yeah. If you can't show, for most banks it'll be two years, some it won't, some will say six months, but those who say six months may say six months is fine, but your interest rate's going to change. So you might have had one interest rate that reflected the presumed security of employment, mm -hmm. lower risk, but now you're at self-employed. So maybe you're not even making 50, maybe you're making 60 or 70, but you can't show the history. Mm -hmm. You can't show two years of filing your taxes or you can't show 12 months of consistent income. Yeah. Now the bank is going to say, we're not as certain about this, mm -hmm. so you may not qualify. But that's not at all. The, or you may have to go to a different bank. That's the, what I was going to say. To qualify, you go to the, and the, the rate the, may the be different. a different bank, or maybe even to a B lender, which they'll will come with a cost because yeah. you're going to pay a higher rate at that secondary lender. Uh, Let's be very clear: B lenders are not bad lenders. No. If they were bad, they wouldn't be legal. If they weren't legal, you I wouldn't be they, getting it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They et cetera, save right? a lot of people, and I think and I think a lot of people who are in business for themselves are quite familiar with the term B lender. Uh, Absolutely. Versus those who are just a homeowner. Absolutely, and here here it is in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. For those who don't like paying higher interest, feel free to call your accountant and tell and get them to file what you actually earn to the revenue to Revenue Canada mm -hmm. and pay pay, pay significantly more on in income it. tax, yeah. and then you can get the cheaper rate. Yeah, right. It, it, that, that's the end of the argument. Catch twenty two on that. Yeah. But what's important is I completely appreciate that people wanted to get in the side hustle or the gig economy. My encouragement to that person thinking about doing it is mm -hmm. keep your job while you're doing it build up the history, build up the consistency, build up your ability to support yourself and to show that you've gone through season after season after season and it is now mm. So it's a segue rather than a leap and then swimming back up again. Do the transition, yeah. right? Yeah. Because let me talk about one more thing about the gig economy, Mike, and that is this. During COVID, the world saw the single greatest spike in activity of online commerce, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. It's not a surprise. We weren't allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. And people still had to do something with their money and they were bored and whatever. They got into online shopping. Yeah. So we saw the greatest oh, yeah. spike in Amazon it. came into its own. Uh, but guess food. what happened this year? Yeah. 
the borders open, the mass mandates are gone, people are free to be as they were. We have the pendul pendulum hasn't swung all the way back, no. but this year on record now has seen the greatest decline in online shopping. Yeah. For a couple reasons. We've shifted back to bricks and mortar shopping habits. One, yeah. we're not confined to our homes anymore. We've shifted back to online. And two, subsidies are gone. We don't have the extra money hanging around. And three, people are nervous about their financial well-being because interest rates have gone yeah. up, credit cards are at the max, people are dipping into their home equity more than ever mm -hmm. before, they've extended their amortizations, there's no more runway for some, yeah. for many. Is there was it game a brief over? Period. No, it's not no. game over, but it's time for rehab. Yeah, There was a brief period when the mask mandates ended, when we were truly and, and formally you know, realizing that COVID, at least all the, the restrictive dynamics of COVID were now behind us, where it was like spring break. Honeymoon. We just went crazy for a little yeah. while and we deserved it. And we were just, we were going out for Darn dinner, right, we were we doing this it. and that, and blah, 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 blah. But then, I don't know if we got tired or just another reality check where we went, hey, I can't keep doing this. Uh, I just looked at my visa bill for last night or I looked at my bank account statement and we're spending a lot more than it's coming in. We need to get back to reality here. So, And that's really what it yeah. comes down to, Mike. I, I, Most of us had that reality check. Some of us are maybe coming to it much later, and those are the ones we're kind of talking a little more to today, I think. I, th I think that's what we are. It's, it's, it's not bad news for everybody. It is time, though, to have a look at where we mm -hmm. are. All I'm saying and all I've ever been advocating for is pay attention. Yeah. Financial responsibility. A little bit of delayed gratification. Make sure you're okay take care of all of the what if scenarios that may come into your life because guess what yeah that's today and and a little coaching is always a good thing whether it's our little contribution to that but beyond that uh, what would your recommendations be for for a financial coach to anyone other not net actual names but what where where do people tend to need to go when they need financial advice uh and i'm not talking about wealth planning i'm talking about just pregnant is you, you talk to your your lender, do you talk to your bank, talk to your parents, who do you talk to? I, I, would, I would say this, Mike, uh, this, this would be my offering to anybody. Decide once and for all that you're not gonna look for a temporary solution. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna look for a Band-Aid. You're not gonna look for how I can get through this one. Yeah. That you've got, you're going to have your moment where you have your epiphany and you surrender yourself to reality. Yeah. And you look at it and you say, my life, I am not comparing it to my neighbor. I'm not comparing it to my other family members. I have to only look at where I am. I've got this many more years. This is what I would like my life to be like yeah. in the future. One day it would be nice to retire. One day it would be nice to not be renting my home forever from the bank or whatever. Yeah. And I don't want to exhaust all my equity. It's time for me yeah. to actually have a moment. So, and so what would, go ahead. I was just gonna say the simplest and best thing for anyone to do uh, at least at first is get a piece of paper out list all those expenses that are recurring that you have and then in the next column decide whether these are you know uh, rate them are these absolute necessities are these frivolous can I do without this one put the check marks in be honest with yourself and I, for most people they could probably find just in that preliminary exercise that they're going to be able to eliminate a significant amount of, of spending per month and and that's a good start yeah. I would say. Mike, there, there, we, we talked about this, uh, we, we said before, ignore the headlines, mm -hmm. because the headlines were still saying, what recession, everything is great. They well, are they now almost unanimously to the saying, other extreme. Yeah. we're in recession, yeah. times are tough. Uh, we're, we're, you know, more and more people are struggling, more and more mm -hmm. insolvencies, et cetera. It is now not open for debate. We predicted it. We just said that they've been they've been lying to Canadians. Basically, mm. that's mm. what I'm saying. They've been selling headlines. Who's they? Anybody who had an interest in one to keep things calm mm. was not telling the whole truth. Surprisingly, Eric and I have not had any job offers from any news media organization since we started doing this. Weird show. how I that happened. That. Yeah. But my, I, I agree with you though, Mike. It is important to pull out simply a piece of paper and a pencil, and you can do this, and you can budget, and you can decide where you're going to cut. You can mm -hmm. decide where you're going to be lean. Be lean. When we come back from the break though, we've been flirting with this idea, we gotta talk about all the talk around increasing supply, all the talk 
around bringing mm-hmm. more housing. That if we had more housing, it would make homes more affordable. That is the solution, as we've said. I'm going to throw a in a wrench yeah. there. I'm, I'm going to say though, it's not the magic bullet for many Canadians. That even alone will not be enough, and we're going to talk about mm-hmm. why. Yes, it is part of the solution. It is a definite contribution. It's a solution for many. It right? is a solution and for many. It's a solution many. to much. So absolutely. When we come back. Welcome back to Hitting Home with Mike and Arif and reality check is the theme today and we're going to shift that reality check over to our government and specifically government targets, government projections, they all do it municipally, provincially, federally. Um, they promise a number of homes over a certain period of time. I, I believe federally they're saying it's about a million and a half or two and a half million homes will be built in the next 10 years. Uh, I know within Ontario, our, our premier has said we're going to build two and a half million homes over 10 years. Funny enough, our previous government, Liberal government in Ontario, said they were going to build two and a half million homes over 10 years. None of these targets ever seem to come to fruition. And looking at our, the realities that are out there right now, I can't see how any of these targets can be met. I, Matt, I don't mean to be pessimistic. But the reality is we're, we're right now dealing with labor shortages uh, in the trade specifically that are making a lot of the projects, uh, it's slowing them down, it's, it's even stopping a lot of projects uh, in residential housing uh, here in Ontario and across Canada. Um, there are other factors that are inhibiting the construction and building of these homes. The government, all the, gov- the government doesn't build homes anyways to begin with. They can create incentives that will hopefully translate into more homes getting built. But let, let's elaborate on yeah, this a little bit. Yeah, let's elaborate on for sure. I think you bring up some great points, Mike. First and foremost, you're absolutely right. Governments have mm. been saying we're going to do it. Well, first, and, actually, let's back up. First and foremost, there was a whole bunch of denial happening that said, now the problem's not supply and demand. No, the problem is supply it's and demand. The primary the, problem. Absolutely. You need homes and if we don't have the homes for people, prices go up, You're rents right. go up. Now, That's been established. Let's take a look at the other side of that. So absolutely we figured out finally homes, more homes are required. Mm-hmm. Then they said, well, we're going to build more homes. Well, that's nice. Except for the fact during the pandemic, all of a sudden, all of the building materials shot up by hundreds of percent. Oh, yes. Which if a builder's already into, entered into a contract with an eventual or a future buyer, but there's, mm-hmm. an actual, there's an actual buyer on the books, yeah. the builders have said, we have to pause the project. Yeah. We cannot complete. We can't meet our obligation yeah. at these rates because we're upside mm. down mm. on it. The other scenario so, was we're going to have to increase your purchase price. You came in, you put that deposit down in a house four months ago, well, sorry to tell you, but your price has gone up another. Well, then you thousand. had some of that tested that in happening. court, where the court said, "Sorry, builder, you're not going to win. You've got to complete or other way." You've mm. had builders who actually bankrupt their project, and someone else picks it up and takes over, but they put a new price tag well, on it, so all the contracts are null and void. Now, nobody loses if it's a tarry on deposit. Tarry on gives the money it's back, public. but someone who sat putting a deposit, expecting to be able to buy a house at one price. Mm-hmm. They get their money back. They didn't get interest back on the money that they no, had on the deposit. They put and that now they're money buying a new things. home at a much at higher prices. price. They may not be able to buy it. But here's yeah. the other thing. Who's a builder? Builders aren't these bottomless pits with endless capital. No. They've got to be able to qualify to borrow money. They, they might be putting their personal uh, assets on the yeah. line to protect that. And they others investors into get. that project. They yeah. they may not get financing, but when interest rates, when the prime lending rate is up mm. by 400%, basically, yeah, okay, then that's also increased the cost of borrowing for a builder to get yeah. the project and done. And it stifled the, bank the desire to build because the profit margins are tightened so much more. Or yeah. construction financing as well. Those yeah. prices have got out. Now let's add to the mix. Mm-hmm. What is the cost to build a new unit? We just read in the paper the other day, here locally, I think we did the math, mm-hmm. before there's a shovel in the ground, just the permit fees and development charges for a new unit are about 100 thousand dollars yeah that's in what? that's here a hundred in the gta i think it's double that a hundred thousand dollars for what 
for just studies for a piece of paper and for absolutely now now I'm not saying there's no value in that hundred thousand no it has to be done it's a process mm -hmm. but I am saying that that number has magically inflated mm -hmm. from about forty five thousand dollars not so long ago in the grand scheme of things to over a hundred thousand dollars have costs gone up for the municipality absolutely well that's it there have. are hard costs that the municipality has to cover in that too but you're not paying for the price of the home, you're paying for the price of the home, the materials for the home, the labor, That's, all of yeah. the drawings and engineering, all the taxes, and all of the things that go into the municipality everything else. for buying. So if yeah. a housing, if the price just for paperwork, so to speak, to get mm. the home shovel in the ground is $100,000, Housing prices aren't going to yeah. come down that much. Yeah, and and it touches on what uh, the current opposition leader federally, Pierre Polyev, is saying, and how he how he can be saying this, I don't know. He's talking about I'm going to make it uh, less expensive for uh, uh, for municipal approvals and for for the and and I'm going to push municipalities and the provinces to build more homes. And he's going to tell conservation authorities for one to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, but he's he, going to tell other organizations. He thinks he's to going to. That's he what he's, he's saying going he's going to do. He's quite ambitious, but and 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 his intentions are good and his motives are good. Uh, these there these are definitely hurdles to the building of homes. But I honestly can't see how he's. Well, going here's to, what he, here's the other and, thing and he said though, Mike. Just, he said. I'm going to t incentivize municipalities that if yeah, they don't and penalize said, on the other side. The federal government provides funding to mm. municipalities for their infrastructure programs that they yeah. need. So there's going to be a string attached. If you don't yeah. meet the target, you're not going to get the infrastructure money. That's what he's saying. But if so you we'll meet the targets, out. you will you will be rewarded. Now, will those rewards be equal to the costs or greater than the costs of those municipalities? They're going to have to be. Because if, if the municipality is losing ground with every new development that it comes, even if they are being rewarded for part of it, it's not going to be enough incentive for it to, to happen at any greater pace than it is already. So, um, but yeah, again, we just we see federal there governments promising certain things, and, and typically those projections come ahead of an election too, because it looks good. It placates the people. We think, oh, good, we are going to meet uh, targets. Well, no, we can set targets. Meeting targets is a whole other thing. There are some other interesting things that come into the mix, though, Mike, as mm. we all know. So. There is the actual cost. Those costs are apparently reflective of inflation. One might be able to argue that there's a little bit of excess empire building in between some of the departments, and maybe he wants to thin out some of those departments. Mm -hmm. That didn't work so well for a previous leader of uh, uh, running for, for premier back in yeah. 2011, and it didn't work out so well for him when he said he was going to thin out some of that. So mm -hmm. I think Paul Ever's got to watch how he says what he's going to say. Yeah. But here's the other thing that comes into play. Okay, Interest rates still are what they are. So that's a variable. Here's another thing. Mm. When we have new Canadians coming into the oh, I mix. I was just going to get to that. Yeah. Well, then let's do it together. Yeah. We've got new Canadians coming into the mix. They are likely and possibly, let's go with possibly, coming in differently capitalized than Canadians who already live here mm -hmm. who are fighting to get into home They're ownership. Gonna, many of them will go straight into the, 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 the real estate cycle as owners. And, Absolutely. Uh, um, so and they're going I to absorb what, what yeah. that's going to do, their influence mm. and the influence of those who, it may not be everybody's uh, flush with money, that's true, that's a reality, mm. but if there's enough people, even if they're a smaller percentage of people, who have more access to credit or capital, mm -hmm. then they're going to consume whatever comes on the market. Why? Because we're in a defi deficit position of housing stock. Yeah, and we've seen examples of that. So we don't that. only have to break even, we have to do more than break even before we're actually going to tip the scale of affordability. N not to be confused with affordable housing, mm. but housing affordability. Yeah. It's going to have to more than tip the and, scale. And the, the, the formula is the more housing stock there is, the, the less demand is for each individual unit the more that keeps housing prices in check. And, uh, but yeah, th that immigration uh, policy that we have in Canada, we need, we have a deficit of- You said of, we need skilled labor. We need skilled people, we need trades. We need, so it's kind of a catch-22. We need the people, okay, and we need to replace people who are, are leaving the workforce, retiring, we've got those aging baby boomers, 
Um, we've got others who uh, are just passing away, well, you know. Yeah, so but our people population are living longer, though. Our, our, our birth rate has gone down. The number of children per family uh, is, I think, 1.4 or something when it was like 3.5 25 years ago. So we do have to I'm going to put counter. a bow on this. Yeah, do it. If we don't manage ourselves, mm. our habits, and our own realities, mm -hmm. then we're going to have to manage our expectations. Well, that's true. But we do, I think, in scenario or summary to what I was saying is, I think our government needs to match our, our immigration with the ability to house the new people that are yeah. coming in too. And, and if it surpasses that, we're going to see the situation we have now continue. If I'm going to leave worse. you with a prediction, though, Mike, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you with a prediction that, that reflects some of the things that we've said over the past few years, which includes Canada is today where uh, is today where parts of Europe and the rest of the world were before. Well, we should look to them and for we're going from to their mistakes start to and see accomplishments. more people living in communal housing, multi-unit mm -hmm. residential, less of the single detached. Yeah. Even though it's our dream and we've got all the space and all the land, it's not about the space and the land, it's the ability to service, getting the infrastructure well, to it. that space yeah. and the land. And protect. And our ability to service yeah. our own purchasing habits and, and all those kinds yeah. of and things. And protect our lands too. Protect From our lands as well. That, which we're so I think, I think Mike, I, I really do think though, you're, I, I think you're right on, the government has a role to play. That role is not going to be to provide housing, that role is going to be able to make it possible to but provide make housing. make those targets more realistic and, 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 and attainable and stick with them. That's what would be my advice. Don't promise the moon. Absolutely. So as we as we close out this show, though, I think uh, I, I want to encourage people once again. I think we both do. Don't give up hope. Absolutely. D double down on the idea that you yep. want to do this for yourself, and there is always an opportunity. Check those mortgage mortgage renewal dates. Put that list together. Start where you early. Cut back, get it all going. Yeah, start early. Start early and, and get your or, your affairs in order. Decide for yourself. Have a family meeting. Have a friends and family meeting, whatever it is. An intervention. An <laughs> intervention, if that's what you want to call it. But decide what's a priority. Budget. Decide that ice cream's on Friday. Decide that maybe we don't need everything. And I'm, I don't want to be accused <laughs> of what the federal finance minister yeah. said that was cancel your Disney Plus account. But decide what you need in your life. Pick up some healthy habits, I think is going to be the order for the day because mm -hmm. I, I do want to leave people with this there is only so much equity there is only so much runway yep. everything has to be taken into consideration one great idea doesn't mean you can go do it because all of the other things have to mm -hmm. fall into place that has to do at a municipal level managing their affairs a provincial level managing their affairs a federal yep. level managing their affairs but internally inside our yep. own homes we got, got to yep. manage our affairs. It's a cycle our parents and grandparents and their parents have been through, and we'll get through it too. And so. with that, thanks for joining us on Hitting Home with Mike and Ark. We'll see you again next time.